Okay, Woo. we are live. Let's see if Facebook recognizes that we are live. You always see it, my dear, peeps before we do. So let's find out. Here we are. Hi. Okay, welcome to Magic Show episode 11. I'm here with Sarah Bueller, who is my work wife, CEO, boss, <laughs> business manager. But most importantly for this episode, The Magician's Assistant. Episode 11 is a masterclass on magic. And so as awesome as the magic show is, there's so much magic happening behind the scenes that Sarah helps facilitate. And, you know, one of JP, guest number three, he reminded me that every great magician has a magician's assistant. And that magician's assistant is really what allows the magician to pull off the act. And so I thought for the masterclass, it would be really fun to bring Sarah on. And we are basically going to jam here on the themes that we're seeing across the episodes and kind of even bring even more embodiment and practicality to what we've learned so far. And as things evolve with projects that Sarah and I take on, <laughs> they keep getting bigger and bigger. So we also decided we'll probably do one of these every couple of episodes so that we can keep grounding, keep embodying, keep playing and keep creating more magic. So Sarah, uh, there are literally no possible amount of words. I just spent the whole 35 minutes talking about how amazing you are and how much I love you and how <laughs> glad I am that you're here with me. <laughs> so thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to talk about magic. I don't know. So let's kind of talk about, let's let's kick it off with talking about the themes. Because what we did to prepare for the show, just to give everybody a little behind the scenes, is we went back through every single episode and we kind of pulled it apart and looked for what are the common things that people are talking about. And I don't know about you, but for myself, I even had like a ton of new insights about things that Kameen was saying, like, oh, that's what she meant. Did you have that experience? I did, I did, especially um, kind of identifying like a golden thread that runs through each of these magical guests. I mean, we've you've essentially created like a community of magical people. And so to experience their individual magic in each episode and then come back and see how their magic contributes to like this whole community, um, there were definitely new insights that came up for me as well. Yeah, I'm excited to share that. So we're going to we're going to share those insights, the golden threads, as well as some of the magic that's actually been happening as a result of implementing, which I think is going to be the most fun. So let's sort of dive into the first theme that I saw. And so I know you and I pulled out different themes. So mm -hmm. feel free to pull your themes across when you when they when they mix and they match. Okay. The first thing that I saw was the distinction between control versus now what the, what I would have put on the other side of control before the magic show is different than the word I'm choosing now. I think if I had to pick a word before the magic show to be the opposite of control, it would have been like surrender. Okay. Now I'm saying it's control versus participation and insignificance. Okay. Okay. Which to me is super fun because surrender feels, and I'm in, this is probably my limited understanding of what surrender means, but <laughs> surrender feels, I think to me and a lot of other people, like you have no control, let go. And to someone who's a little bit like control obsessive, not necessarily a jump that's like always <laughs> exciting. <laughs> so insignificance to me is the feeling I get when I'm literally on the top of a mountain and feel like a speck. You know, when you're at the top of my, all you see is other mountains. So it's not like you're, you don't matter. It's just, you're such a small piece of this. Yes. And as crazy it would seem to me to like be at the top of a mountain thinking I could control the weather, right? Like I just have to participate I don't have no control, but I have to participate in the environment. Yes. It's um it's almost like taking ownership in like surrendering. So I still see how like it is. It's there's 
there's still, I feel like a level of surrender, but like being willing and owning that you have a participation in it feels different to me. So I see that. Yeah. Yeah. I like the ownership in surrender. That's awesome. That's like such a cool way because control is like an abuse of power, right? You're not that powerful, but you keep trying to pretend you're more powerful than you are where surrender can feel like the opposite. So ownership of surrender is like, Hey, I do have a role here. Mm -hmm. It's not as big and all encompassing as I thought, but it matters and it's significant and I do have to own it. Yes. Yeah. It's a choice. And I love that you brought that up because that's another one of the themes. We'll, we'll bump into that theme next because choice kept coming up over and over and over again. But like, I, I want to pull in how some of our different guests talked about this idea of control versus insignificance or control versus participation. And, you know, Lindsay talked about it in terms of the gateway to the unknown. Mm -hmm. It was, you have to surrender into the unknown, but you do have a choice for how you enter into that and how you experience it. Like there's a level, level of ownership of like she said, being in the wild and being resourceful. Yeah. Mari brought it up in terms of being a part of something bigger. When things didn't go her way, when we call that failure, she talked about it in terms of your, your world paradigm was too small. The way you thought two plus two didn't equal four, it equals three turns out. And that, you know, you get, you can be confused and surprised that it wasn't for, but that doesn't make it wrong that it wasn't for. And so her view of you being a part of something bigger was, Hey, I get that you thought your experiment was going to run this way. Turns out you're a little speck on top of a mountain and the weather turned a different pattern. Yeah. Chris talked about it in terms of participation. I mean, we, we came up with that word in his conversation where you have the choice to vibe high enough to play with magic or not. Yeah. And also he, he um, also mentioned when he talked about like the astrophysics of it, when you talk about like insignificance and like incredibly extraordinary that like you get to be even a small speck of this entire picture. And I love how you phrase that too. You get to be a small speck in terms of this big picture. Because when you are a little bit obsessed with control, you yes. get to be small and not in control. It's like a weird, it kind of breaks the breaks the mental paradigm on that a little bit. You get to be a small spec in terms of this giant, massive, flawless, billions year old picture. It's like, that's a totally different way of looking at that. Yeah, it's really, that's like the perspective. And I got that when you were talking about the mountain, like, that's part of the magic is like being willing to change your perspective. But the perspective, when you look at something as massive as everything, it's like you look at it as I'm just a speck or like, yeah, I get to be one of the billion trillion and infinite specs. So um, what you do with that, that's like owning your place as big or small as it might appear. Yeah. I love that too, because you kind of own your place as this teeny tiny speck. But the paradox of that is it gives you so much power. Yes. Where when you're trying to be this massive controlling godly force, you actually end up with no power. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? That is fun. It takes, uh, it takes the pressure off. It does. Yeah. And maybe now that you're kind of saying that, which is the magic of our debriefs, <laughs> um, pressure is actually like a, a dark magic. Ah. Uh... Yes. Just as powerful, but it's like a dark magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's interesting. Control as pressure, which takes away from magic. Mm -hmm. Insignificance reduces pressure. It increases power through participation. And opens up space for creativity and more magic. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's, gosh, there's, we'll have to bring Kameen and Devin in later because there's their, their perspectives were good there too, but let, let's keep moving because they all, let's go, let's go to per perspective because we talked a lot about perspective and that was the other theme that we saw okay. kind of coming through the whole thing. Right. So um, Jason talked about the sidewalk. I loved his, his perspective on that. Right. He was saying, <laughs> 
face down on a sidewalk. You can't see anything but sidewalk. So if you're in a problem and someone's like, hey, you know, what options do you see? You're like, uh, cement. You know, and there, you, I don't see anything else because my perspective is so low. Kameen mm -hmm. uh, talked about, and this was funny, this was my insight thinking about Kameen's because when I, <laughs> when I invited Kameen on to say how to make life work for you, I didn't realize that I was coming from a place of control. Like, tell me how to control life to me. <laughs> when we did the debrief, I was confused about where the conversation went because it went to like, what's the blessing and the challenge and how, how what's trying to come through here? And I was like, how did we end up there? And now I'm like, because that's how it freaking works. Like, <laughs> that's how you make life work for you. You, you. you look at the perspective of what's happening from a different, from a not just your perspective, like what else is life co-creating with me right here? Yep. I don't know if you had, you probably had a different experience. You're like way, way more enlightened than me. No, no I love, I mean, it came, came on episode two, right? So of course, like there was an innocence in the way I think that we showed up to like our understanding of magic. So now after 10 episodes, again, going back, it's like, oh, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I hope to be watching this because I know exactly what face she's making. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you'll understand when you're older. You'll understand when you've got more experience. Yeah. When you're a, a wiser wizard. <laughs> got it. We're getting it. <laughs> so that was really fun to see that what she was talking about, what, how you make life work for you, is to change your perspective on what's happening because life is always working for you. Yeah. Have you had any experiences like that you can? just off the top of your head since then been like, oh, right, this is this is what she meant. Mm. That is a great question. There's a lot of stories about magic, but do I have one about understanding? Let me think about perspective as a whole. So Jason with the sidewalk perspective, Kane with looking at how life is working for you, even when you think it isn't. And Juliet, which I'll just loop in, talked about when something feels impossible, it's showing you your edge, not the limit. Right. That blew my mind when I thought about that yesterday. So if I'm going to... Yeah, I wouldn't even... Been, um, I don't think I would have associated that with like, it's your perspective versus the perspective. It's a different perspective. The per Your perspective versus reality, right? Yeah. Your perspective yeah. is impossible. Reality is you don't think it's possible because you're inside your paradigm. Oh, I now and now I know the example. Okay. <laughs> so I thank you. I was like, you always could tip it right over the edge for me. <laughs> Siba and I are looking at buying homes in Colorado. Now the home prices in Colorado are like five times what they are in Pittsburgh. So my initial response is this is going to be impossible. This is going to be impossible. Like I'm a self-employed person. I take a bajillion dollars in deductions every year. The government thinks I make two dollars an hour. You know, who's going to sell me a house? <laughs> On top of that, the way Siva and I co-create life, we're really learning to do in better partnership because we're really different people, and we really tend to be in different perspectives about the way we think about the future. And every conversation we have about the future that has sort of like. I don't want to say high stakes, but where we're going to live and the house we're going to buy and those kinds of big decision type of scenarios almost always cause friction. They used to cause like full on arguments. Now they cause a little bit of friction and tension that we're learning to navigate differently. But if you see all of this through the lens of perspective, like we did in the magic show, it's actually a blessing we talk about Kameen's thing. It's a blessing that the houses are five times the price because if they weren't, we might not have to look at this, right? We could just keep throwing a house into a, the current paradigm that's what I would call like, we're kind of settling on a neutral decision versus really allowing each other to co-create the full vision of what we both want and challenging us to bring it together. Yeah. If we look at Jason's perspective here, if we look at it like, okay, well, this is what we can get approved for, but the housing prices are off the charts. We're going to have to get some like crappy little trailer, which is not true. <laughs> but like, if we go down to the cement face on the sidewalk perspective. That's what we get. And what kind of magic is that going to invite in? 
And what's been really fun is I keep showing houses to our realtor that are easily half a million dollars over our budget, at least 300,000. And she's like, I don't want to show you that house. <laughs> You're going to love it. <laughs> and I have to bring in this Juliet perspective about showing me my limit, my edge, not the limit. And so I said to her, look, I don't want to see this house to buy it. I want to see this house because I'm trying to expand the vision of what I experience as possible for me so that life will bend to my reality and not the other way around. That is like such a beautiful example of like the manifestation of magic. Like, and I love that it's um, that you're in the process and I want in a future part of the masterclass to hear like what actually happens in this particular e example, because it, you're bringing in like you're that's, a practical example of like magic, like trying to force its way into your life as far as like letting go of what you know and expected, forcing a new perspective, um, a willingness to surrender or just participate in the reality that's in front of you and owning that like things can be different and being like intentional with Siba about co-creating like something new. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's a great example. I know you're gonna hold me to like whatever manifest, which is extra fun actually, because now it puts a little bit of accountability to magic. I wanna show up in 10 episodes and be like, <laughs> welcome to the house we didn't want. Like that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that is so fun. Okay, yeah. so to be continued. Yes. Let's go into view of life from here because view of life is the third theme that we what we brought in. And I think that it kind of ties into perspective, especially the way that you just reflected back, you know, life offering. I, I don't know exactly how you said it, but you said something like, look at how life is doing X, but you said it in a positive connotation. <laughs> there's, a, there's a very, because I would have been like, look what life is doing to you. <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, but across all 10 guests, the view of life was almost unanimously kind on your team and in favor of your evolution. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's part of like... Um... I know you have, I think some particular, oh yeah, Chris and Camille, these are kind of the same ones that are coming to mind for me where it's like life is happening and you are part of it. And that is the reality. And you have a choice. Jason talked about this too, about like your experience based like outcomes. Um, being, like, this experience is happening and like, it's your choice whether you're like Chris said, you're going to vibe higher vibe low. And like, there is an infinite and limitless opportunity for you to take advantage of the magic that already exists. You don't have to create it. You just have to, your view of life has to be open and inviting to it. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that was, you know, let me see, who did I write down here? So Chris, Kameen, JP all have really cool, influences on this topic too and why jp came up because jp and i talked about how to create other people but mm -hmm. if you go down jp's process the way he creates other people is exactly the same way he creates everything in life and the first thing he did was notice like notice what you're seeing that you don't like the second step was forgive yourself for judging it as the thing you don't like and so that let's say i'm judging you sarah like which i would never do but <laughs> <laughs> let's say I'm judging you as let me think, think about the most ridiculous thing I would ever judge you for it would never happen so I'm saying I'm judging you of being disorganized the first thing I have to do is notice that I'm seeing you as disorganized and then forgive myself for judging you as disorganized to bring you back to neutral like what else could be happening here and if you do that with people, you can also do about do it about life situations so that you can sort of release your perspective on what you're judging life to be and bring it back to neutral. Yes. I think this is going to come in through, we're going to see this more in the next theme. I don't want to jump ahead, but um, 
it's almost like that blank slate that Devin talked about. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of going back and stripping away everything that you've created that doesn't serve you to get back to neutral versus trying to, um, yeah, kind of work on the surface with the external and the environmental experience that you're having. Um, mm -hmm. It's changing, changing your perspective and viewing life in a different way. And I think what's, what would be extra useful, this particular piece of the conversation is to say that when we say view of life, we're also talking about view of people and view of your current circumstance. Because just the other day, I tend to get into this view of life or view of circumstance in a kind of controlling way when it comes to creating new business for my business. And I go into this place where I'm like, sit down and work and don't get off your desk until you make some money, God damn it. And it's like this very like, my view of life in that perspective is like demanding and constricting and oppressive. And it's certainly not an environment that makes me feel like I'm thriving to create. And so I use the tools from the magicians on the show so far and remember like, okay, my reality is unfriendly here. So probably not the one I want to choose. If Kameen is saying that life is like kind and friendly and in your favor, and Chris is saying that reality is perfect. Well, my reality in that moment was far from perfect. So my reality was the wrong one. <laughs> like I'm just like yes. full of them out. So I went for a walk. I went to the gym and on my way home, I ended up bumping into this incredible person, had a great conversation. And it turns out that like there is, you know, some possible potential for an evolution in business relationship. Whether or not it happens, it doesn't matter. What I took away from that was, look what you did. You stepped away from your reality. You, you didn't experience, like you didn't listen to the oppressive voice of the made up life that you're living in. And you were rewarded because life is actually much kinder than we pretend it to be. Yep. That's, um, I'm just like, as you're saying that, I'm thinking about all of the opportunities that we take and we miss when life is like trying to be kind to you. And you're just like brushing it aside because you're so like focused on your reality, which is, which is not the reality that you want to necessarily live in. Not for everyone. I would say most people, most magicians in the making <laughs> muggles <laughs> for, for muggles <laughs> what you just reminded me is of something that Devin he either said to me in the magic show or he said to me in our coaching and it was let go of outcomes mm -hmm. and this kind of goes back to the control piece but also the view of life like if you believe that you're in control and your view of life is scarce you're gonna be much more likely to be trying to control outcomes. Same way if I'm sitting at my desk and I won't let myself get up, well, I'm gonna completely miss the possible outcome that I experienced in a much more joyful way, meeting that girl out on a walk. Yep. And the other part of that is not only let go of outcomes, but let go of how they show up. And if your view of life is that like, there's abundant opportunities. If you let go of control and you uh, change your perspective, well, then you're much more willing to go out and meet that and actually be able to experience it. Yeah. I think that's the, probably the perfect segue into the next theme. Um, because when you talk about outcomes, like typically an outcome, I think is something that you're working towards or in the future. And one of the things that JP had talked about was like, trying to overcome the desire to rush to the end and like slowing down enough to create yourself first, mm -hmm. um, which, which is being present. Right. I think which is theme number four, which is theme number four. Yeah. Perfect segue. Absolutely. Perfect segue. Um, the idea we'll start with Devin's perspective on presence and then we'll loop everybody else in too is coming from that blank slate like we talked about which essentially means not bringing the past into the present right not ex expecting the same thing that's always happened to repeat itself which is easier said than done honestly and I'll, I'll give you a story about how this happened in a magical way so as a part of this home buying process 
we had, you know, to run a credit report and we're sitting with a lender and they say, oh, there's a late, there's a late payment on your credit report. That's going to really mess up your interest rate. And we're like, what the heck? We like flawless, like we pride ourselves on our flawless on time payments. It turns out several months ago, we paid off a loan with a lender and there was some weird, like uh, technical thing that happened in the, in the paying off the transaction. So we had to reverse the transaction and then pay it off again. But in that window of reversing it and repaying it, there was like a time gap because you know how funds work, like they're available and they're not. They reported as late on a payment because they reopened the loan but didn't tell us. It was like the dumbest thing and then, and then didn't tell us that we were late and reported it. So there was like, it was just so, it was surprising to find out, irritating to see. And then I started to, they said, we'll just call the lender and ask them to take the late payment off. And I started to get all worked up because the particular person with whom I'd have to speak was pretty like un inflexible, right? Just mm-hmm. that kind of a, a financial participant. And I was just dreading the conversation, pulling the past into the present. She's going to do what she's always done. When I called, it turns out she's on leave for months. And so the person that I had to deal with instead is like the bomb. Love this person. Like, so you and called and he was like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll have it done by this afternoon. And it was just it was awesome things where it's like, just let go. Because you don't know that the same thing is going to happen again. Usually it doesn't, right? <laughs> you <Usually> it won't. <laughs> yes, it doesn't. And you still see like it has because you're still projecting the past onto the present. Because that's another thing we can do. Something different happened, but the way you're looking at it, it makes it look the same. Uh, your perspective of it or your view of it has not been fluid. Yes. Fluid is a great word for that. Yeah, that's what, I think that's something that's just in this conversation that's coming up is the difference between like rigidity and fluidity. I think in all of these things, when it comes to um, control or insignificance, perspective, view of life, presence, like you have to be, there's a, there's a willingness to participate in a fluid manner. And that's like without being so rigid, that's what's really going to open up like the opportunities as well when it comes to magic. I really love that too, because oftentimes when we are in this place of rigid control, we t- we say we're stuck. The mm. language is that we're stuck and fluid is so opposite of being stuck. Yes. Love that. Yeah. So let's look at how Stephen and um, Stephen, Chris, Mari, I mean, they all talked about presence. You know, Stephen talked about a day of Stephen. Spontaneity was a really fun um, like le- e- e- adventurous, let's see where this goes kind of thing. And, and I'll share what Kameen said too, because another insight that I had when I reviewed Kameen's conversation was she said something like, be willing to ask the question of what your purpose is and have the answer be an exploration. And what came to my mind when I reread that was a question, the purpose of a question is not an answer and it's adventure. And so that with Stevens, I was like, woo, that's fun. Yeah. Steven was like, I think of um, my perspective of presence and what it means to be presence and the influence that has on the life you live and the reality that you experience. Um, it completely changed it for me. I mean, everything he talked about, like his um, magic trick was like creating extraordinary results from being ordinary. And I mean, his amper- answer was simple. He's like, just you can create magic in every moment if you just stay present. Like there's no past, there's no future, just like pay attention to the now. And I know Devin brought that in as well. Um, but actually a lot a lot of the guests brought that in. JG as well. I think Jason talked a lot about um, like just focusing on the fun and the joy that you can experience in the moment. And um, from that, anything can be created. In, and Mari brought that in too, actually, when she talked about when she, quote, fails, which she called, you know, the outcome of the experiment didn't match the hypothesis. She didn't project that onto the future in terms of all the terrible things that were now going to happen as a result. And the question is, what am I learning? And what am I now seeing that I didn't see before? Mm-hmm. It's just like, that was like a different way of looking at presence. Mm-hmm. And Chris, 
after Chris's episode, I, I created something that I call a reality check, which actually has you check in with, am I present or not? And you basically close your eyes, put your hands on your heart and ask, what am I feeling? And it might be anxious, frustrated, overwhelmed. Okay, cool. What's happening around you in the literal present, which is something Stephen talked about, like awareness, what's actually happening. I'm sitting at my computer talking to Sarah. That's all that's happening. So does so that's reality. So the check is, does my inner experience match reality? No. There's nothing happening in this interaction that would make me feel any of those things. Okay, cool. So how we tap into magic is to say, well, if your inner inner experience perspective matched your outer reality, what would you be feeling? Connected, inspired, having a blast. Okay, now you feel into that. Bang, now you're present and now you can tap into magic. Yes. That's such a uh, such a useful tool. I've um, used it as well, and that was just what uh, that was the most recent episode. So in the past couple of weeks, that's a tool that's a super super useful tool you can bring into any experience that you're having mm -hmm. to like go back to the present and also start to like introduce like little bits of magical spark into your life if you don't feel like it's there yet. It's a really yeah. uh, practical way to start seeing it. Because when you are present, what we find is your perspective shifts instantly to something more joyful. And when you're in a state that's more joyful, hell of a lot easier to see life more pleasantly and let go of control. Mm -hmm. Love when the theme stack. Didn't even I, do that. I, I was going to say, because like life is kind, right? Because <laughs> life is always trying to be nice to you. It is. It's everything stacked up. <laughs> it's all going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And I want to go back for a second because there's a cool story here that I'll, it's like a story, but it's like a suspense story. So it's fun in the, in the realm of adventure in the realm of exploration. So there's a particular guest who will not be named that you and I talked about before the show started, who we thought would be like, wow, that would be totally insane if this person were to appear on the show. Like there's like at the moment there was, it felt impossible, didn't it? It was like, I mean, it just felt like, how on earth is that going to happen? And through the application of these practices and just kind of going with like, what's in front of you? What opportunities in front of you? Don't try to control that outcome. Um, don't look at the perspective as impossible, right? It's not the limit. It's just your edge. Let then go of the expectation. Let go of the expectation. Life is magical. Like that's the, that's the view of life that we've taken on at least for 2021, hopefully forever. And then stay present to what's in front of you. And by kind of being in all those spaces, just conversation after conversation, we're 10 weeks in, this guest is booked. Fucking magic. <laughs> From impossible to done. Thank you, next. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun when you're like 10 weeks in and we're like, we need to do impossible. <laughs> episode 52 will be on the moon there we go space station <laughs> Houston. Yeah. that actually i know this is um this uh is a little bit out of the theme but when you talk about that and we talk about the impossible it reminds me of juliet talking about like the mystery beyond like what you think is impossible and that i think was a really really important part of um the magic that she brought and introduced us to yeah, how did she say that? She said impossible is just possibility that you've taken the mystery out of. Yes, she was talking about, I think the mystery is like when you think about what's impossible and you get to the very edge, like the mystery is what lies even beyond that. And the mystery mm -hmm. is where the magic is. So if you yeah. stop at what you think is impossible for in this example, if we would have said, well, like it's impossible, there's like, forget it. Like, you haven't traveled beyond the impossible to discover the mystery, which is where the magic is. So, yes. so you miss what's possible. So you miss what's possible. But if you're willing to like hang and work through and trust to get beyond the impossible to what's the mystery, which is like, you don't know, then like you find magic, which is, this is the perfect example of that. Which I love too, is kind of playing with this is impossible just means you're missing what's possible. <laughs> which is like, I just got a fun way to think about that. Like if, if it seems impossible, you're just missing what's possible. <laughs> I think also you shared once um, that like, 
if something is, if you can um, verbalize something being impossible, the only way for something to be impossible is to have an opposite possibility. Like it's some somewhere in the world. It has to be, it has to be in order to have the opposite of. So like mm -hmm. if you can like present it as impossible, it can be possible. Yeah. Makes sense. Which is fun because it makes no sense, but it makes, at least to me, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are tracking this. <laughs> yeah. that, it kind of, what that kind of, I think, alludes to is theme number five. A little bit in a totally weird way, or maybe it doesn't, and I'm just abstractly creating a bridge, but either way, we're going there. <laughs> theme number five is choice. Hmm. choice. And this came up over and over and over to the point where I was like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> and it's this making a choice. Like you can choose for something to be impossible. That's a choice. Mm -hmm. Which is edgy. Because when you feel like something's impossible, it does not feel like you are choosing that experience. Mm -hmm. No, it's definitely, um, I, I think for me, when you say choice, uh, and I think of like the theme of the episodes, like the words like, ownership and expression and um participation all kind of come like tie into that that cho the choice the word choice. and i love that you brought up expression because the first actually the first person that comes to mind is phoebe yeah and talks about self-expression through like how you present and it's so that's such an interesting one too because i don't think Unless you're, and maybe this is totally made up, I don't know, but it seems like unless you're really into fashion, you're not putting that much like choice into your self-presentation. But she's kind of saying like, you know who you are on the inside. Yeah. Do you want to choose to express that and unlock it? And that's why her work, though like on one perspective, isn't as like conceptually and spiritually deep, but actually has the same impact. Because she is really kind of just like take that inner thing and make the choice to put it on the outside. And when you do that, you you bridge a gap in confidence and it's just interesting how that plays in there in a totally different way. Yeah, I think um, her she really helped me see like she brought in the practicality of it, like taking something, manifesting the creativity that exists within you on the outside through visual expression. And visually, we think like what you can see, which is just like that was that's her magic trick. That's her way of showing you, proving to you, allowing you to really physically see that like it's your choice and you always have the choice to pull out what exists within you and like mm -hmm. express it as authentically as you want. Or A hundred percent. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, there were a couple other, I think, expressions of that element of choice. You know, JP brought it in in terms of choosing how you see someone. You can see someone as this irritating, immature, you know, whatever. And you can, you have the choice to forgive yourself for that perspective. And then the next steps were, you know, who do you want them to be? Desire. And then to love them and then to see that, that's a choice. And it's a, it's sometimes not an easy choice to make. Like you get, there's a lot of momentum behind our judgments of self and others. But what I heard from uh, Juliet and Jason sort of along those same lines is you get to know is a choice. No, I choose to not see you this way. I choose to not experience love this way. I choose to not... I choose no to this thing I don't like. I don't know what the other option is, but I still choose no. And I think it's so interesting because when we think about the word choice, perhaps what was limiting for me before this was I, when I think of the word choice, I always think a choice between. And if I can't see this or that, then I don't see a choice. But a choice can just be no. I, I like all or nothing is kind of coming to mind for me, right? Like a lot of times we, I have experienced like you need to choose all or nothing, but like there's always a third choice. There's always a fourth. There's always a choice, whether you see it or not. That's a, that's a great reminder. And it brings, it brings my attention to Lindsay because the unknown is the infinite. 
And so if you're talking about there's this choice or this choice, well, that's only what you can see, right? An impossible choice is between two things you don't want to choose. And if possible, impossible is your edge, not the limit. And the unknown is the infinite. You can make a choice to say, well, neither of these, I don't know what else is available, but I'm going to step into the unknown, as Lindsay suggested, and use that impossibility, and that choice as a gateway into the unknown to say, what else is here that I wasn't seeing before? And that you can't see until you make a choice. Yes. I see like, this is like, the um, kind of like the tool or the question of like, what else? And this I feel like fits for any places where you may feel stuck or from any episode, like something like whatever magic you're trying to bring through. I'm like, it's, it's always a question of like, what else? What else? Because there is, there is mystery. There is unknown, like embracing the unknown is what Lindsay talked about. And there's um, actually, I see, I see this theme in, in every, from every guest in every episode. It's like, what else is there? There's always something else. So choosing to ask that question and get curious and explore and adventure into like the unknown, like takes you into that, the magical realm of reality, which is magical. <laughs> I love that reality and magic just became synonymous. So you're, you're, you're either in reality or magic, which are the same. And if you're in neither of those, you're in your perspective. Yeah. I think that. Even that is just really fun to see. Yeah. And the in, you know, maybe the one, I guess this goes under choice, but there is some element of sort of willingness to to play and be in this space. And it's really, really fun. I'm just kind of looking at my notes here to, to make sure there's the only other story I think I want to add that I think kind of really brings us all together is what happened with Chris after his episode. So you and I decided to go on an adventure in magic to see if we could find his Greek guy from the story. Mm -hmm. And how freaking fun was that? Yep. Because we talked to Chris Tuesday and we had this guy on the phone by Friday, which let's put that into perspective for a second. We have to go on and get context in case yeah. like, go ahead, yeah. you, you, get, you get the context. No, no, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you heard, you heard the story a couple of times, so. Right, okay, so if, if, if someone hasn't seen the episode, it's amazing. So go back and watch it. But he told a story about a man he met in Greece and they had this magical encounter and he wished he knew his name. He didn't know his name. And that's sort of like, he told the story. It was a beautiful story. And this was years we, ago, right? Years ago, like 2017 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And so we, we got off the phone and you and I got on the phone and we just thought, let's, let's play with these new tools that we've picked up. Let's find this guy across the world. We only have a photo in the name of a town. That's it. <laughs> like let's do this impossible thing <laughs> and it was such a fun adventure because we like I remember you okay first of all we know we weren't going to control the situation like there was no I thought about going to Santorini but that was more selfish than control I was like I'll do that for you <laughs> your perspective was this is happening you yeah. were like you exactly like that oh yeah <laughs> The, from the minute one, you were like, this is happening probably tomorrow. <laughs> what what do I, it was the next day. <laughs> we were present. We like looked at what was in front of us. We were mm -hmm. viewing life as like, absolutely. We're going to get exactly what we want here. And we made the choice to like step into that unknown and, and play with that. And we, and we were just on an adventure. We were kind of doing the day of Steven. All mm -hmm. right. Like, what is this person? Like, we'll reach out to this person. Oh, they don't know. Okay. We'll go this way. Oh, this person knows another person. And we were just like, just playing in that space and meeting what was in front. And in three days, we had the name, location, phone number, and email address of this person. I mean, that is fucking magic. It's magic. What a fun masterclass. <gasps> yes. So let's, I just want to, I want to, I want to end this conversation by bringing a, a metaphor to what it means to be magic that I thought of the other day when I was out on a walk. You know, being magic isn't something you do, right? It's something you be. The same way you can't do fit, you be fit, you are fit, or you're not fit, or maybe you're on a spectrum in between, which is fine, but you don't 
like do fit. What does that mean? It doesn't make any sense. Mm. But, and similarly to like being super fit, I think it's a great metaphor to also being super magical. You don't see that many people per capita who are super fit. Why not? Because it takes things you have to do and practice. Sorry, give me one second. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, it takes things to do, to practice, to be, right? And it, it's like a way of being that you've got to pull into practice to increase the evolution of. Does that make sense? So if you want to be fit, you have to practice and change your relationship to fitness and nutrition. You need to work out. You need to eat well. You need to sleep. You need to take care of yourself. There's this whole spectrum of things to do, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't do fit, but there are things that you can be and practice to become fit. And magic is no different. Fitness is available to everybody. It's available to anyone. You might have to overcome the mental blocks, but there's like an inner fitness in everybody. Naturally, yeah. we're fit the same way naturally we're magic. But there are things that we're pulling from this masterclass and we're pulling from these episodes that if you do and you practice, you you become your, well, I would say you almost like you return to your magical self because you're already there. Just like fit is under you, magic is under you. Yes. I think that's a great, that's a great um, relatable and practical example because sometimes magic, magic can be a hard thing to grasp if you don't experience it every day to your knowledge. Um, and that's one of the things that a lot of the guests talked about is that, you know, we were asking them for like their, their tricks and their tools. And one of the things I think almost everyone said is like, it's a skill. It's available to everyone, but it's, it is a practice and it takes skill, but it's a skill that anyone can develop. If you show up and you commit and do the things that you need to do in order to unlock or build or strengthen or make visible what's already available to you, what's accessible. That's so, so fun. So it's going to be fun to see what happens next. It's going to be fun to see what happens in the next masterclass. And it's going to be even more fun to see what kind of magic unfolds in between. My invitation to anybody watching is to share what magic you're starting to see in your world as you start to implement these tools and become more magical yourself. So Sarah, thanks for doing this to me. It's never the same without you. There's this yeah. magic that's special to what you and I can create and I, you know, I adore you and thanks for doing this with me. Yeah, thank you. We will uh, see you next week. All right. See ya. <laughs>